What a beautiful morning we have got on our hands today. So uh, let's go see if we can't catch us a giant bass. But man, this is one of the best parts of fishing is, you know, just walking up to your boat to go out for the weekend and, you know, just experiencing God's creation. So let's get out there and see if we can't catch a big one. We're going to try to catch them on those right there. But if we can't catch them on those right there, we might have to just bring out the cheat stick. There we go. Very big, but well, ain't that something right there? It's like, what do fish? What do you think goes through their head when? <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's like, if you did get that down your throat, what are you gonna do for then? But I get it. They're predatory animals. We're gonna measure them just cause. Let us know kind of where we're at on the day, you know, just kind of how well we did. I don't think this fish is even 14 inches, but 14 and a quarter. Need to put a little respect on his name. So, there we go. First fish of the morning. That's funny. It's always funny to me how you can catch a fish on a bait that's half, half its length and pretty much the same girth so but i get it but that's also kind of why we spend the money that we spend on these glide baits is because uh they do have that drawing factor to fish just in general not just big fish obviously it does catch big fish but it just has that drawing factor to uh every fish so you know one of the biggest tips i can give somebody that's glide bait fishing, um, shallow obviously to where you can see the bait is in a kayak is stand up because a lot of times when you're glide bait fishing, you know, a glide bait is just like every other bait out there. They want it a specific way. They have a specific cadence that they want it at. And you know, we were just started right now and I threw that the 6.5 draw which is a little bit smaller profile glide um and i was working it a little more erratic you know a little bit faster a little bit tighter chops and all that and since i was standing i was able to see probably a 19 inch fish come up and just miss it and it didn't miss it or it missed it because i was working it a little too fast for the mood that they're in right now um, obviously as we get closer to the feeding time, they will probably just come unglued on it and won't be, you know, as just, ooh, ooh, let me, let me try to get this. They'll be like, I'm gonna get this. So a little tip I can give y'all is just if you stand up when you're fishing these baits in a kayak, you know, where you can, obviously I understand there's some times that you can't, but just being able to see that bait, not only lets you work it a lot better because you're seeing exactly what's going on and you're not guessing and you're trying to count the real twitch down and all that good stuff but you can see if a fish misses the bait and if you can see a miss you can make that adjustment a lot quicker to figuring out that that figuring out that specific cadence they want so just a little tip for y'all hopefully it uh can put some more fish in the boat for you and hopefully it can put some more fish in my boat because i gotta show the old man up Look, see, just right then again, 
I just saw a fish hit it. It was a little fish, but you know, it's still letting me know what cadence they want. And so just, kind of, oh crap, kind of just spoke that one into existence is if I was sitting down because I don't have that angle, you know, to see right, I would have never saw that fish. See that fish right there, just let me know. I'm probably still working it just a hair too fast for them to, you know, just get it the way you want it. Let's go check this bank over here real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. This bank isn't as steep, you know, it really has a, a taper to it. This other bank that I was just on was, you know, come out about three foot and then pretty much dropped, so post-spawn, you know, that's pretty good. Got some in my nose, sorry. Don't mean to be picking my boogers in front of y'all, but uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this bank. And uh, then we're gonna run to the next spot. Got a little milk run this morning and I'm probably gonna run, cause I was out here yesterday and, you know, kind of put a, couple small pieces together of the puzzle oh yeah dude that was awesome he t-boned it man oh it's a good one too oh yeah dude he t-boned it get in there <laughs> oh man he come out from underneath whatever is right there and boom come here baby it's a beast of a mouth man just a gorgeous fish god that's pretty cool little little tattoo on her fin look at her tail let's check this bank out real quick i mean overhanging tree come on man come on man all right let's see if he's sitting under this oh <laughs> low guy there we go that's a better fit <laughs> Uh, maybe not as good as I thought. Get it. Boom. I guess maybe sometimes you do just need to go to the bank that you didn't think would work. Just set it right there. Huh. Broken jaw. Let's see if he'll be of any help to us on our catch 22. Nope. Just a good solid 17 inch fish, man. Got a spider on my board. I don't do spiders. Not one bit do I do spiders. There we go. Wow. Mm, got me good. All right, you obviously don't want to be here, so uh, get out of here. Guys, I know that you're not the one that put it out, but if you're out fishing just like this, you know, you're just out there and there's a piece of trash just right there, just do the world and do the lake a favor. Pick it up, throw it in the back of your boat, throw it under your seat, and uh, just kind of help keep the waters clean. Like I said, I know there's probably gonna be some people that go, well, I didn't put that trash in there, so why should I pick it up? Just be a good steward of the, the resource and it's not gonna hurt you to take five seconds out of your day to pick up a piece of trash throw it in your boat and then throw it in a trash can at the boat ramp or just throw it in your trash can when you get home. 
or in the trash bag that you have in your truck from when you stopped at the gas station to pick up some go-go juice and a biscuit. So just kind of, you know, if we're all out and about just picking some stuff up, we'll have cleaner waters and, you know, just little things. There we go. Oh, he's barely hooked. It's a healthy fish. might help us might another beautiful 17 inch fish man fish is pretty look at that lateral line you can see it all the way it's cool ah, thanks buddy brush it Don't rush it. No, oh, I'm gonna lose this fish, man. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, sir. Oh, yes. That's the ones we're after right there. And I'll share a little tip with y'all that I like to do. Now, this is a good fish. Got it on the outside, so they're still finicky, man. Where's my best friend in the world? Good old Bubba. Let me get this fish measured and all that good stuff, and then I'll share y'all with that little tip. Cool, there we go. 18 and a quarter. The fish is healthy, man, and beautiful. Let's get him some water. We get a weight on this one. You know, just to see kind of where they're at. A lot of kite fishing is about length, but I like to get some weight in there. I'm gonna guess three, two, five. Three, five, seven. Cool. Yeah. Three and a half pounder. Dude, who can't go out and catch three and a half pounders all day? They are just fun. Thanks, buddy. All right. Let's run through that little tip I was talking about. So, most of the fish that I was catching, and you know, my, my main go-to is something in that seven to eight inch range. They've, uh, excuse me, they've, uh, they've done, <coughs> golly, geez. They've done a lot of studies. I don't know if a lot is the proper term. They have just done studies to where something in that six and a half to seven and a half, eight range, inches range is the optimal size for a bass's mouth. Now, obviously that depends on the size of the fish and all that good stuff. But so, like I was saying, most of the time I go to this, this is just the world renowned KGB shad um, 180, which is seven and some change. But if I feel like I just can't get them to truly commit to a big bait, whether that's because of the side profile, you know, it just, it looks like it's too much for them. You know, sometimes the year they want the biggest meal they can get so they can sit on that meal and not have to chase 50,000 little bait fish. So I'm rambling, but 
if I feel like this is too much, this size, I will go to something along the lines of this. Now this is the six cents, 6.5 draw. Um, and what's cool about this dynamic of these two glide baits is this one's silent. There's no rattles, there's no, you know, there's nothing in this bait. This bait is obviously a different profile form, a little bit smaller, skinny, you know, it's a hair shorter and it's about half, half the profile. But what's also cool about this bait is it's got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of some rattles in it, which I think sometimes it's kind of cool because it's like tick, 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 tick. So it just gives it some noise. So if you get into some water that's a little bit muddier, got a little tinge to it, you can add some noise. And these two are my favorite, like as a one-two punch, these two are my favorite. If I'm going out and I'm saying I'm gonna throw a glide bait, um, these two are my favorite because this is a little bit bigger, a little bit more profile, silent, silent, no noise. This is a little bit smaller, a little bit less profile to them, so it may entice them, may not, but just a little bit smaller, a little bit less profile, and it's got some noise to it versus this bait. This bait is also more of a chopping style, you know, like sitting in the one spot and hitting the same being it staying in that strike zone a little bit longer this is more of that that s that we talk about a lot or that you see a lot so these two right here are my one two when it comes to glide bait fishing it's a good dynamic i'll have them both tied onto the deck i'm playing with this new yak attack rod stager which is actually kind of cool i didn't know how i'd feel about it at first and i'm still kind of on the fence you know obviously you're probably not paddling with it um but on a reservoir like this, and since I have a motor, just opening this cockpit up is huge. So, like I said, one, two punch, these are it. We got a chop style bait and we got an S style, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And it just, it just, you know, it just has that different feel. And they, sometimes they want this, sometimes they want this, and sometimes it really don't matter. You just pick one up and you'll get bit. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a tip on if you're glide bait fishing to kind of increase your chances of catching some fish. So let's see if we can't get back to catching some more. I was telling y'all about picking up trash and then putting it in a trash bag later when you get back to the ramp. Over here heading to a new spot and uh, got me a trash bag. So, like I said, I know it's not our responsibility. I know it's not, um, it's not, um, you don't have to do it. It's nobody's going to shame you if you drive past, you know, it's not like the person who put it in the water, but just do something good. Be a good steward of the resource. And I don't know, it's just kind of one of them things that bugs me. I'll watch like live fishing or I'll see somebody and they just drive past it and you know it's like just it's it doesn't take that much to just go mm, stick it in the back and then dispose of it later so just me I could be weird could be you know who knows I'm rambling awesome guys that is why I said you mix up that right there is the reason you mix up the glide bait situation I threw that one bait I threw that one the KGB in there like three times, four times. I'll be able to look back and tell exactly. First cast with the the draw, this beast comes up. <laughs> I mean, look at that. A fish may go 20, maybe. That's literally why I 
I'll go one or two times with one bait and then one or two times with the next bait. I'll try to mix the cadence up of each one just because, you know, sometimes it could be the same bait, just a different cadence. And then <laughs> that is literally why I do what I just told y'all a minute ago. There we go. Almost a 20 inch fish, baby. That is a kayak fisherman's dream. Post spawn. Probably high three since it's so thin. Three, four, six. Okay. I'll take it. Pretty fish. All right, guys, it's about two o'clock, 1.45 ish, somewhere in there, and uh, I think we're gonna call it a day. We got a, got some stuff to do back at the house, so we're gonna get off the water. But uh, just wanted to take a moment and run through my gear. You know, some people are curious on what people are throwing, so I'll just tell y'all. Um, excuse me, on the bigger stuff, I'm running the G Loomis 965C swim bait rod. That's for the bigger glides, you know two ounces and plus or around that two ounces and you know just kind of depends on the bait um that's what i'm running on the big stuff got a karata 200m with 30 pound braid to a 25 pound seaguar brazex leader um i just in kayak fishing you know some people throw straight fluoro but in kayaks there's just so much working against you when you lean into a big fish not having that stretch and yes fluoro does have a stretch it doesn't matter what fluoro you get it, all floor stretches it may not stretch as much as mono but just since i have i'm pretty much exclusive braid to leader on everything everything i throw because i'm in a kayak so um that's that rod um and then the the next rod for the smaller stuff that you know that smaller 6.5 draw from six cents um i'm throwing that on a shimano x pride b the 77 heavy Corrado 150 mgl 30 pound braid on this as well. I kind of throw 30 pound on a lot of things. It just feels like it casts good, doesn't wear out, and you know, I can get a lot of line on the spool. But on the lighter stuff, I go to a 15 pound leader. Um, I feel like these smaller baits that don't have as much drag and you know, they don't have as much force behind them. If I go to a heavier leader, it just really takes away from that true action of that glide bait, really allowing it to get out and then come back or to cut or whatever whatever that cadence is that you're trying to accomplish that day. So that's 15 pound of Brazex. Those are my two setups, man, uh, for today. Um, we did catch a couple miscellaneous fish on a jig head minnow. It's no secret that that's working today. Um, I'm not really big into it. I'm just, I'm still learning it, all that good stuff. But I'm a student of this game, man. And I think every fisherman's a student of the game. No matter what level you're at, you always have something to learn. That's why um, we share this stuff with you. I'm not really big on holding secrets or anything like that. I don't think any of us should really be holding secrets because we're all one big team. The fishing community is one big team, man. And if we can all learn from each other, um, we'll all put bigger fish and more fish in the boat. So yeah i just and some people are gonna call me crazy man but i would rather do this right here i'd rather sight fish a glide bait um it's a little bit different when you're out deep and you're guessing you know on your cadences and everything i would rather do this over top water any day of the week man i just there's just something about throwing that bait out there working it you're, you're seeing it you're seeing it do its thing you know and just something coming from left field and just you know t-boning it or coming up from underneath like a great white shark does you know during like you see during shark week on seals um there's just something about it um it's hard to put into words if you've done it if you've experienced it you know what i'm talking about um and it's just it's just a fun way to fish but uh Y'all let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. What do you think about my one-two approach with the two different types of glide baits? Um, and also let me know if you have a little way of, you know, when you're going out and you're saying, I'm a glide bait fish, what's your way? What's your what's your one-two punch? What's your follow-up bait? Uh, like I said, we're students of this game. I'd love to learn from you just as much as you could learn from me. Um, but yeah, 
I hope you pre uh, bleh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun morning, a fun fun morning, and uh, hopefully we can bring some more of this stuff to y'all. And uh, yeah, so we'll catch you on the next one. Hey y'all, listen, North Alabama really is a place where fishing dreams come true. From top-notch guides to diverse fisheries to breathtaking scenery, head down to North Alabama where you can reel in the adventure of a lifetime. In there. <laughs> Discover unparalleled access to pristine waters loaded with everything from crappie to catfish to bass. So whether you're looking to load your cooler or catch a trophy, <laughs> plan your next adventure by heading over to northalabama.org. <laughs>